let n be a natural number. The statement that we want to prove is the sum of i as i ranges from 1 to n equals n times n plus 1 divided by 2. We are going to prove this in a somewhat roundabout way. The proof is going to illustrate the technique of case analysis. So here, we are going to consider two cases. The first case is when n is even, and the second case is when n is odd. So when n is even, there's a natural number k such that n is equal to 2k. And so we can write this sum as follows. And more informally, the first summation adds the numbers 1 up to k, and the second summation adds the numbers k plus 1 up to 2k. So each summation is going to have k terms. Now what we do is, we are going to pair the numbers as follows. So I'm going to pair 1 and 2k, and add them first, and then followed by 2 and 2k minus 1, and so on. And more formally, we can rewrite this whole sum as the sum of i plus 2k minus i plus 1. And this gives us the sum of 2k plus 1 as i ranges from 1 up to k. So each of these is the constant 2k plus 1, and there are k of these in the sum. So the final answer is going to be k times 2k plus 1. But what is 2k here? 2k is the same as n, and so k is n over 2. So writing everything in terms of n, we get n over 2 times n plus 1, which is precisely what we want to prove. So we have taken care of the case when n is even. Now what about the case when n is odd? So when n is odd, we can write n as 2 times k plus 1 for some non-negative integer k. And so the sum of i as i ranges from 1 up to n can be written as the sum from 1 up to k, and then plus k plus 1, and then plus k plus 2, plus all the way up to 2k plus 1. The key here is that from k plus 2 to 2k plus 1, they're exactly k terms. And I'm going to use a similar idea. I'm going to pair things up. So I'm going to pair 1 with 2k plus 1, 2 with 2k, and so on, up to k and k plus 2. And if we do that, what we'll end up with is k terms of the sum 2k plus 2. I have this additional k plus 1 remaining, so I have to add this in. Now let's simplify this. So this is k times 2 times k plus 1, after factoring our 2 from both of these terms, plus k plus 1. And so this gives us 2k plus 1 times k plus 1. Now this is just n. What about this? Well, if you multiply this by 2, you get 2k plus 2. And 2k plus 2 is precisely n plus 1. So this is just n plus 1 over 2. Again, this is precisely what we want to prove. So combining both cases, I have proved this statement completely. Now the question is, why would anyone want to prove this statement this way? Especially when we have found a simpler proof already. Well, it is quite possible that in the process of thinking about this problem and trying to come up with a proof, one realizes that the case when n is even is easier to handle, as you can see. And so one would attempt to prove the easier case first. Once that is done, one considers the remaining case. So unless one works harder to find another proof that unifies both cases, like the proof we saw in the previous video, this could very well be the proof that one ends up with. And a lot of mathematical results are like that. Initially, they have long proofs, and those proofs have been shortened or refined over the years. A lot of times, 
the early proofs are a product of the initial way of thinking about the problem. And as time progresses, better understanding of the problem emerges, and that leads to different proofs. In the next video, we'll use a technique called mathematical induction to prove this same result.